This is a Hot Pie Media Original. Hi, I'm Deb, and this is my podcast. You are listening to the Deb O'Keefe Podcast, the podcast where Deb O'Keefe doesn't know anything. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, I was uh, complaining about people who say WWW before a website address? <sighs> Don't be that guy. But also, I just did it myself. I just went to the internet and typed in earlybirdcbd.com because that takes you there. Earlybirdcbd.com. Why would you go there, you say? Well, Early Bird makes full spectrum gummies. They are not only delicious in taste, but yeah, they've got not just the CBD, they've got the THC in there as well. Full spectrum, that's what it means. But it's really chill. Uh, let me just say, this might not be for you heavy stoners out there. This Early Bird product is for you to chill out, to have a fun time with your friends and not feel really lit. And it's almost like it was invented for me. Years ago, I, I confessed rather embarrassingly for a 40-something year old woman that I just don't know how to smoke weed, all right? It's never made me feel good. I'm not against it. I totally think it should be legal. It's ridiculous that it isn't, especially uh, medical marijuana. Let's get on that, Texas. But um, when I tried these early bird CBDs and I went small, guys, I started a quarter, then a half, and I'm up to three quarters and that's it. That's it for me. Just three quarters. Helps me sleep at night. Helps me relax if I don't want to drink because I'm working out the next day. Then I'll have an early bird CBD gummy with my friends. Go to earlybirdcbd.com slash Deb. That gets you a huge discount on your first order. 20% off your first order. They have tinctures as well, guys, as well as other products. So go to earlybirdcbd.com slash Deb. No WWW required. Today's guest is a social media giant, a TikTok influencer, an Instagram hero. And I'm super excited to be talking to this young man. He's uh, really successful in what he does. But not only that, I enjoy the content because let's be honest, there is a ton of people out there on social media who are very successful and they fucking suck. I am, um, God, I'm a bit of a hater sometimes with some of the content I see online. I just... God, call me grandma if you want to. I just don't find it entertaining. But this uh, 20 something young man has made, uh, he's just made a great career for himself. He's funny, he's intelligent, he's uh, just, I don't know, he's a unique guy and the content is great. So I'm looking forward to talking to him earlier, later, earlier today. I was dealing with something at home, um, animal related again. So it's uh, it's kind of a, a interesting subject matter that, I'm bringing to the show today, considering who my guest is, but, um, guys, I'm dealing with some shit with the animals and it's stressing me out because it's causing my animals pain and it's causing me financial pain. And the potential of what is happening in the future is really worrying me. I don't know what's happening, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're both sick right now in, in different ways. And, um, it's horrible. It's horrible. Alfie's having some um, spasms in his neck and they're so bad. They're to the point where he just, he, he can't move. It's like he, guy's muscly to begin with, but he just hunches his shoulder muscles up and, um, and, uh, and, and then they go into spasm and, and then he starts shaking on the rest of his body and panting. And that's, that's the sign that he's in pain. So that's what I can't handle. And it's really bothering me. And Brady's been limping uh, on her left back, le right back leg. And um, I'm really worried that she might have torn her ACL. So I've got medication for the both of them right now. And the doctors are, you know, doing a wait and see thing. But it's awful. It's absolutely awful, isn't it? it when your animals, your family are sick and you just have to kind of sit there and look at it. I just, can you, okay, DQA, don't question amnesty. Is it okay to be massaging my dog? And this is not a sexual thing. This is just a Alfie has got some muscle spasms going on. And if I that was happening to me, maybe I'd go and see Mr. On the Butt Man, who's my bodywork professional. Um, but I've been doing it with Alfie a little bit. Like when he's in this moment of it's awful, I just have trying to be given, give, you know, giving him some re relief of the pain around his neck. And sometimes I'll like do the, muscles on the side of his spine. Is that a job? 
is that, can you be a professional animal masseuse? Does that exist? I don't even know. Maybe I need to go back to school and learn how to be one, but um, I'm an unofficial Alfie's bodywork person right now because that's that's all I think I can do apart from giving him these medications, which I hate doing. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's going to be a great interview today with um, my next guest. His name is Mamadou, and we've had some issues uh, connecting with him on Zoom, so we're just going to go straight into it because uh, it, I don't want to keep him waiting any longer. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. How are you? Bonjour. Um, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, it's kind of cloudy out, but uh, not too bad. How are you doing? Uh, where are you based in? We're in Austin. Oh, okay. And you're in New York, yeah? Are you in the city? Yeah. yeah I'm in uh, New Jersey, but it's like, like uh, 10 minutes away from the city. Yeah, so yeah. Pretty much the same thing. I've been to New Jersey yeah. once or twice. Yeah, it's uh, not that great this time of year. It's always it's always gray and cloudy. It's cold, but uh, and it gets dark at like 4.30. So. Oh, I know. It's like England. Yeah. I think in England, there are some places getting dark before four right now. I'm English, by the way. Um, I probably should have said that. But uh, yeah, it's like I listen to English radio sometimes at home and they're doing weather forecasts and like 3.55, it will be dark tonight. I remember those days. It can be a little like, oh, so I know how you feel. Yeah, it's just, I don't, I get used to it, but like, it's always sucks when you like, you take a nap at like one or two and then you wake <laughs> up to pitch darkness. That's something I've never gotten used to. That's really weird. I know. It's so, and then like, you think the day is over, but you got eight hours before bedtime. Very strange. Yeah. It's just, it's just messing with the whole like schedule for the day, especially in college. I, the, where I hated it the most was like in college where I would like have classes that get out at 5.30 and it would just be total darkness when I would get out. Mm, it, it's weird for the mind and it's weird for the body. You know, I've been doing, I'm a bit of a, uh, I don't want to call it biohacking, but like learning more about your body and what you need to have a successful daily life and circadian rhythms, you know, which we probably learned about years ago in school than have forgotten about, but getting that the sunlight at the right time of the day really helps set you up. And I don't know how our bodies are supposed to l learn the signals of going to bed at the right time when it's black at five o'clock. It's so strange. Exactly. And I feel like that's, well, the whole thing with like seasonal affective disorder, it's just, I don't know. It's just, I, I just don't like darkness. I like the <laughs> summer. I like the long days. There's, that's why I don't complain about no matter how hot it is in the summer. I never, you'll never hear me complain about the weather because this, this is the time of year where I complain. No, you might be living in the wrong place then because I was just uh, at an event this lunchtime uh, downtown in Austin and took a walk with, by the lake with a friend. And I said to her, I'm worried that I didn't put sunblock on today. Sorry. <laughs> that, that problem. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it gets annoying because it's literally factor 50 year round here. Um, well, don't, you know, I'm not, not being completely honest. We do get crappy weather. We had a, we had snowpocalypse this February. We had, we had, everything was shut down for about five days in Austin. This is, I mean, you guys are used to this, uh, but we, we had so much snow and ice. If you didn't have an all wheel or a four wheel drive car, you couldn't go anywhere. And people's electricity went out for days and it was sub zero. It was very, very strange. Very, very strange for us. It's so weird. You would think that we would be used to that kind of thing, but every once in a while, there's one sto snowstorm that catches everybody off guard, including the government, and nobody's prepared for it at all. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you, you would you would think we we're like in California or something. It's like they've never seen snow before. It still gets them. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. And then I remember, oh my gosh, because I have a really good friend of mine who lives in Brooklyn, um, and I remember was it last year or earlier this year you had those ridiculous ridiculous floods where you just saw the subway stations and people's basement apartments looking like, you know, Niagara Falls. I have never seen anything like that because I live in this area called the Heights where it's literally just, it's really elevated compared to everywhere else. And even our driveway got flooded. Like we didn't get hit nearly as bad as everyone else. But the fact that we got flooded, like places in New York, I had my friend, his he had to like take all of his like stuff out of his basement because like in 15 minutes after he moved everything, it flooded completely. Wow. The subway was a mess. It was, yeah, it was something else. Well, that's why Greta uh, Thunberg needs to be president of the world, because maybe we can start to work to fix some of these things. I don't know if you believe in climate change, but... Oh, yeah. I, 
pretty it's sure you're a scientific guy. It's the, <laughs> yeah, it's getting to the point where it's going to be pretty irreversible, and that's when people are going to start paying attention and trying to do something about it. But that's always how it is. People wait until it's like too late, and mm-hmm. you almost can't do anything about it before you want to do something about it. Yep. Yeah. Just, just roll our eyes and SMDH and, uh, you know, keep our fingers crossed. Keep our fingers crossed yeah. that – Someone, maybe someone like you, is going to be keeping an eye out on the animals. Because listen, this is, you are one of my favorite people in the world that I haven't ever met. Obviously, I have very favorite people that I love personally. But, um, and we just sort of randomly started talking on this podcast. Usually I'll do an an introduction and, and such, but we just had a nice conversation about the weather. So I'm going to leave that in there, but I would like to introduce you to those seven people who don't know who you are, or maybe if my mom's watching, she's not on TikTok. She don't, she don't know who you are, but your animal videos not only bring me so much joy, they horrify me. They entertain me. They, uh, fill me with knowledge. And I'm a big animal information gatherer. I am a big animal lover. I'm a huge animal advocate. I mean, I don't eat them. I like to try and rescue them when I can. And, uh, that's, I think what reeled me in with your account, but, um, your, your account on Instagram, and maybe it's the same on, on TikTok. I'm just going to spell it out for the people and we'll put it, uh, down below on the, uh, description on YouTube, but it's, a uh, M N D I A Y E 97. Your name is Mamadou. Am I saying that right? Yeah. And yeah, welcome yeah. officially, Mamadou, to the show. You, uh, as I said, you brighten my life with your animal videos. Um, and I really don't usually do a lot of direct questions on my podcast, but you fascinate me. Everything about you and your content is just, it's heartwarming and it's so entertaining. And when I mentioned to my girlfriends here in the office uh, that you were going to be my guest this week, they were losing it. They were absolutely losing it. And for the first time since I've been doing interviewing for 20 years, I actually took a friend's question. I've got some questions from the girls in the office who absolutely love your channel. And uh, for those of you who haven't followed uh, Mama Do yet, Mama Do will fuck you up with some truth when it comes to the harsh realities of the animal world. And uh, you know what? In fact, I'm going to play a video uh, right here. We're going to insert this in post, but I'm going to p- put one of your videos on here and you get to decide which one it is. But this is this is his work. This is what Mamadou does. And I think part part of the charm that I love is is the analog nature of this v- these videos that you produce and um, your forthrightness. I love it. So enjoy this video and then go straight and follow him on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah, I don't know if this is the most disturbing, but this is definitely top five. This is Malgas Island, and up to 60,000 of these birds called Cape Gannets will nest here. But don't worry, I'ma get to it. So normally these parents take turns with one going out for food with the other staying behind to guard the chick. But because of overfishing, oftentimes both parents will go out for food leaving the chick all alone on the island. Which wouldn't be a problem if they didn't know that. Cause groups of these white pelicans will fly over to the islands and then walk around looking for any unsupervised gannet chicks. So that they can grab the baby birds and eat them alive while they're still struggling. And sometimes they'll just push the parents out the way and then swallow the newborn children right in front of them. It somehow gets worse. Those same pelicans will fly back to their nest and vomit the half-digested recently murdered baby birds for the pelican chicks to eat. And because Cape Gannets have no real way to defend themselves, pelicans have no reason to stop. And since pelicans obviously don't have teeth, those chicks' last moments were spent suffocating while being digested alive by stomach acid only to get regurgitated and eaten twice. Dinosaurs never went extinct. They just rebranded with feathers. One of my favorites was the pelican video because, like, Nobody really expects pelicans to be like, you know. Okay, we're not editing this bit out. We're going to keep this the pelican one and the gannets. So when we were kids, uh, my mum used, if we ate too much or we were being pigs at the dinner table, she'd be like, oh my God, you're just a bunch of gannets. You're disgusting. Like, slow your roll. So for me, gannets were always, I'm associating these birds that just eat quickly. I don't know if that is a thing. I presume it is. My mum's not too much of a dumb, dumb head. But I didn't know that baby gannets were victims to these magnificent beasts that are in folklore carrying babies to their prospective parents. The pelicans are the bastards of the bird world. That's the thing. They do it to anything that like fits down their throat, anything that moves, they will make it. Actually, it doesn't even have to fit. I've seen videos of them trying to eat like capybara. Obviously, that doesn't fit. Uh, a cat a cat is like a very bad idea to try no. to eat. But, like pelicans don't believe in consequences, so they'll try that too. I, there's, you know, if you know, you could probably find it. There's a video of like a pelican like trying to eat a person. 
<laughs> and it's like they don't have a thought process. And <laughs> they see honestly, something you know move, what? and that's it. That's it going in my belly. Honestly, this is going to be the first time I tell this story. Like, uh, out of because people always ask me, like, you talk a lot about animals. What, what have you ever had like an experience with one? And out of all the animals, you would you would think would have like you know pelicans. And I, so it was like when I was seven, <laughs> seven turning eight, I was in Senegal, where I'm from, where my parents are from in West Africa. And I spent two weeks at this uh, summer camp. For some reason, they had two pet pelicans. I never really questioned it, but they were there. They were, I guess they had their wings clipped so they couldn't fly away. They were in this little fenced away area. Not and indigenous. I was one of the youngest to, people. Are they indigenous to Senegal? Are we, we frequently yeah, finding them are. there? They are. The, uh, I think the, white, the great white pelicans, like the, big, the ones that actually like do all the, the, the messed up stuff. <laughs> so they were there and I was the youngest and everyone knew that I was like, oh, he's in the animals. Let him take. So like in the morning, it would be my job to take these fish and like just feed the pelicans. And that was fun for me. You know, you throw them, they would catch them. I was like, oh, wow, fun. Like seven, it doesn't take much to like amuse seven year old me. Uh, they did warn me, don't ever get too close to the fence. Don't lean on the fence. They're faster than you think. They have a wider range than you think. And I'm like, yeah, it's birds. What? Like, okay, whatever. So one morning, brought the fish, same as usual. I only saw one pelican, which was weird to me. But I was like, you know, it's probably in like the back area. I, I don't know how this happened, but I fed the one pelican and I'm looking for the other one. And it was like on top of like the fence, but in a way that I completely missed it. Oh, so it felt no. like, so I turn and it snaps at me. And like, I was like half an inch away from only being able to see out of my left eye. Like wow. it, got, it got that close. Like you could, you heard and felt the snap of the beak right by your face. Yeah. That's ter yeah, That's I, I terrifying. Did, I, did, I wasn't as afraid as I should have been as well, a kid. Cause I don't think yeah. I realized the consequences of what that would have meant if it got to me. But that, that's yeah. again, pelicans and children, very similar. Don't really understand that there are consequences that are negative and could affect them for the rest of their lives. But I, yeah, so now I devote my life to spreading just how like <laughs> foul these beasts can really be. So is that so? That obviously not at seven because you're telling me the kids at the summer camp realized that you you were the animal guy. How did how did that come about? Did your parents have lots of pets, or were you like me? Just we had cats growing up, and that was it. But I was obsessed with animals and wanted to learn as much as I could about all the animals. And being in England, we always had some David Attenborough program on television uh, on repeat, so it was easy to learn. What was it that got you? It's so weird because. Uh I have no idea. As long as I can remember when I was three years old, I had this interest. I would make these like little books, well, books, like I would draw these animal pictures and I would like staple them together and I would be like, oh, mom, I made a book. So, and that was when I was three and I would, and my parents knew that. So I got these, I don't know if you remember these zoo books. They ran these commercials back in the nineties. I love them. I got every single issue. And I remember the order I got them because Wow. My favorite animal are ele animals are elephants. That was the first okay. issue I got, and that Hold was completely on. Hold on by chance. Me too. They're up there with my. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, that's awesome. That's and a. There you go. That's a blind elephant. I uh, was um, assigned to take care of when I volunteered at an elephant sanctuary in Thailand. That's amazing. I got to give you the info. I've always wanted to see that. You yeah. got to go. You got to go to this place. Well, I'll, I'll give. I'll text you the info. But yeah, so so the elephants and learning all about them and how sentient they are and the intelligence with which they move around the globe. Yeah, it was always fascinating. And that was like the first issue I got. The second one were dolphins, then butterflies. It was like all that. There's like 40 plus issues. I have all of them. It got to the point where they started sending me like duplicates because I just got, <laughs> I just kept getting them. So there was that. Um, what else? National Geographic. I had this like video game where you got to be a zoo vet and you got to take care of all these animals with all these different ailments and conditions. Like, but all those things were because I was already interested. It's not like I was interested because I had those things. So I really couldn't tell you where it came from. Mm. All I just know is that I always like acted on it. It was just meant to be. It was, it was something that was inside of you. And you mentioned um, zoo vets and stuff. I, there was a small period of my life, I think, before I saw animals and blood and gore and maybe understood what death was. But I, I did think like, maybe I want to be a vet in the future. Maybe I want, I love animals so much. I want to work with animals. And then I thought I, I absolutely can't. And I probably lost a pet or something and thought, no, there's no way I could do that myself. Was that ever, was that a long-term thing for you? Or was it just a fleeting thing because of the love of animals? 
first game that I can remember having on PC, it was this game called Zoo Tycoon. And you would basically build these uh, zoos, you would take care of the animals. And that was the coolest thing in the world to me. So at the age of like five or six, I told my mom, <laughs> I want to be a zookeeper. Yeah, so that, that was it. And then it was like, you know, well, I mean, you could do something else, <laughs> something that, you know, probably pay a little bit more. And I was like, no, zookeeper. That's, what, what else would I need? You know, over the uh, Christmas holidays, actually, when was it? New Year's Day? Yeah, New Year's Day. Um, I have a party every year at my house. And so Specs is a place where I stop off. Specs, of course, finer foods, spirits, wines, beer, liquor. What? Liquor is spirits, right? Yeah. Uh, liqueurs. I'm going to say that word or fancy liqueurs because that's what I actually got from Specs. I was looking to have a Spanish themed New Year's Day party with Tortilla Española and some other stuff, which we did and it was great. But I wanted to find this one uh, uh, liqueur. It's called Cuarenta Tres and it's from Spain. And it's like a, a vanilla liqueur, which sounds disgusting. It sounds disgusting to me because I don't really like vanilla, but... When I lived in Spain, it was always in these drinks and uh, for years you couldn't get it here, but you can get it at Specs because Specs has it all. You want to throw a fancy party, uh, you want to have people over to watch the game, whatever it might be, Specs can come up with ideas for you as well. If you want to have a theme, they can give you special cocktails. They have it all, the food and everything as well. Go to specsonline.com to find the nearest location to you. Sign up to be a Key Club member because, well, why wouldn't you? Do it right now. Go to specsonline.com. I start as I got older, I was I realized I probably want to go into something else. I never seriously considered like being a vet, just because again, all the others because it's not just like, oh, you love animals, you can be a vet. There's a lot of other things that go into it. So um yeah, I, I never really imagined what kind of career I could have that would involve me like working with animals. Like uh, obviously everyone wants to like be like uh David Attenborough and narrate these documentaries or you want to be out there in the field actually interacting with them. But like, I never really considered, like, I didn't know, think I'd have a vehicle to do something like that. So I was just considered, yeah, this is just a hobby or just something I'm passionate about, but I don't see how I could have a career in this. But, uh, you know, life's funny like that. So now it's talk about animals on the internet. Life, life is funny like that. And in 2021, your passion and the sense of humor uh, can lead to a, a paying career, which I presume you have with your 13.3 million followers on TikTok and your 500,000 plus followers on Instagram and I'm sure YouTube and, and everywhere else that, that people post. Um, and, and I'm not going to get too personal about this because it's very crass to talk about money, but you're making a living. You're making a living off your branded videos. Yeah, I am. It's, and it's... Uh... Yeah, because I think I joined TikTok at like the perfect time, like right before, like, well, no, it was right during the pandemic, I believe. Actually, it's always, I always tell this because it's always like funny how it lines up. Like I downloaded TikTok April 15th, 2020, and I got laid off the very next day. Because, oh, well, the COVID thing. Wow. Because we were based mostly in New York and that became the epicenter for the virus. I had just been, I had just started there. So like I was still in the training phase where I would have to go with somebody whenever we go out to these sites. Oh, and to clarify, I worked in environmental management. Um, so basically that was, uh, we would go out to these abandoned like properties or buildings, perform these like asbestos surveys or mm. general surveys, but mainly for asbestos and other like uh, VOCs and stuff like that. But uh, they were like, it, it doesn't really make sense for me to go with somebody. So they're paying two people to go to a job when it's really, I'm just, going to be there trying to learn figure out all the ropes and like kind of slowing him down so it was like you know we un like it was a it was a bad situation for everybody so mm -hmm. i'm not like bitter about it but yeah. yeah i got laid off the next day so i was like huh i got a lot of time now what's this tiktok thing about because <laughs> i had no intention of posting anything at all so i just did it out of boredom and the, if you scroll all the way down none of my videos had anything to do with animals the animal stuff was supposed to be like be a one-off thing something that I thought it was just funny and I'll just do it once. People will laugh and that'll be it. The world, it I'm glad really you did well it. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that's, you know, if you're trying really hard sometimes, you know, to make fetch happen, fetch isn't going to happen. I think you just, if like you, you know, we said earlier that love for animals is in you and you obviously are a great wordsmith and have a great sense of humor, even though you're so droll throughout your whole video, you say some very funny shit. Um, and this actually leads back to, to the question from my friend, Natalie, who works here at Hot Pie. She wanted to know, um, and I think the answer is no, but I might be wrong. She wanted to know if you read 
your um your videos off of a prompter? And if so, is it an app or do you memorize the content? Uh, no, I don't read them off. Um, usually, I told you, first, I told you, I Natalie, just, told yeah. you, told you. <laughs> yeah, at first, I would just like get in front of the camera and just talk, and like, uh, also, you, you know, your your podcast is gonna learn a lot about me. But um, the reason I was so like expressionless at first, well, first I thought it was funny that way, but like the reason I was so quiet in my earlier videos, my parents didn't know I was doing TikTok, and I didn't really know how to explain <laughs> that I was doing TikTok. So I was just in my room being quiet and I would purposely like do it in the morning when no one was awake. Also like my windows like right there. So I would get like the morning sun, the natural lighting, but I would try not to wake anybody up. So I was being like really quiet, but it also made it look like I was dead inside. It had like no soul. So people found it really funny. So I just kind of kept that going. But um, in terms of like, I would just get in front of the camera and just like, just talk. But as, as I started like taking it more seriously, I would write like not really scripts, but general guidelines mm-hmm. so I can hit all the points I want to hit. But like whenever, usually the jokes that really like people like are like, yo, what the, f-? that, those are like the ones that just come off the top of my head and half the time I'm like, should I even keep that in? Oh, and, yeah. You know, why not? Look, I, why not? So like, I guess kind of, I do. Now I kind of have these like guidelines close to scripts. But most of the time, it's just me, like, just being... Bullshitting guess, around. And, yeah. yeah. Pretty much, yeah. That's what your friends get, I'm sure, when you're hanging out with them. Um, and it, I definitely... I came for the animals, and I stayed for your sense of humor. It's just the way you talk about these animals cracks me up. Um, and you really, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do. Um, obviously we played one earlier and, um, we may even play some more. I think we might add some in under editing when we're talking about them because they're just so awesome to watch. But, uh, also you, in the beginning, you're doing it in your room, your parents are asleep. You're trying to keep it quiet. You're a bit droll. You're, you know, you're under, underplaying it. But it's very stylized now. There's you, like I said earlier, it's really analog. You're superimposed over these videos of these animals and, you know, you come in and out and you're holding this teeny little microphone. And I'm sure in the beginning that was just what you had, but you've stayed with it. And I absolutely love that you've done that because you could set up some professional, you know, screen behind you or you could have a a laser pointer or whatever you wanted to. You You could really produce the shit out of the videos. But I love that you've kept them simple. Yeah, I like I I always like minimalist content because I like it to feel like it's like I'm having a conversation with whoever's watching it. And I feel like that's the one big thing. Like you mentioned, that's how I'm with my friends. That's like exactly what it is. Like when people find out that like I popped up off TikTok and they found out why I'm how it happened, they're like, oh, no, sounds about right. That's kind (laughs) of how I was growing up. I loved animals and I loved telling jokes. I just combined that and now I was doing it in front of a lot of people. But, um, I, I love it. I, please don't change the structure for your videos right now. But I, I imagine, you know, you've got management, you're monetizing your product, which you should. And that's so commendable. Um, at, you know, if we went back in time 100 years and tried to explain that to somebody for a job, it would just literally blow their mind. But what's the what do you see? Do you have you know, you don't have to obviously reveal your secrets, but do you have a, a goal in mind? Once you knew these things were taking off, once you got over a million, fo- I mean, maybe even over a thousand followers or 2000 followers, there was a moment where you might've thought this could be something bigger. What, what is, is there a next step in the works or do you have a dream of a next step, a TV show, something? Uh, everyone always says TV show. And I was always like, oh, I don't, cause I, I don't know. I, I started it for fun so i never really saw how i could like you know translate that into like longer form content but uh honestly i think now i just want to see how far i can take it like uh i think i didn't really start legitimately seeing this as a career until uh, ironically i went to uh youtube because i always was hesitant to go to youtube because i feel like it was more competitive the thing with tiktok was again i joined it at the perfect time youtube more professional it's uh it's like there's more competition and uh there's it's probably the longest standing platform. So when my videos started doing really, and these were just compilations, when those started doing really well, and then I started making longer form content for YouTube, and those did well, I was like, huh, maybe I I might have something here. So yeah, I don't think I have a specific like uh, end game in all this. I, a TV show would be great. That'd be pretty cool. Like or just being able to like mess around with animals in, in front of a camera and get paid for it. That'd be the dream. But uh, yeah, right now I'm just. See how far I can uh, take this. Just widen my reach as uh, much as I can. 
Talking about, um, you know, keeping it simple and keeping the format as it is. Are you current? Are we watching you and talking to you right now in the bedroom where you started making your videos at your parents' house? That window right there. That's where I get all my natural lighting from. Uh, my microphone, which is a microphone, by the way. A lot of people think I'm talking into a like a lollipop or a sucker <laughs> or something. And honestly, I can see why they think that. <laughs> it is, it's a very tiny microphone. It's, it's um, precious. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah. well, oh, because I used to use the Apple microphone and people were like, bro, just get a regular microphone. And it, I just kept getting comments like that. I was like, okay, you, you know what? I'll get a microphone. A, a ridiculously tiny microphone <laughs> that you can almost not notice. Yeah, there's your microphone. Uh, yeah, I've been in radio for twenty years, so I've just had these these big ones. But it's charming. The little one is charming. I say keep it. I say keep it as long as you. I mean, seriously, if you blow up and David Attenborough introduces you on your television show, I say you still keep it. It's very stylistically you. Um, but what do your parents think now? You've been doing this for a year and a half. You've got this massive following. Are they still like, son? What is? What is this thing you're doing again? Are they are they behind you, or what, what do they think? Yeah, they're pretty excited. At first, they were kind of like confused because the, they're more traditional. Where it's like, uh, you know, you go to college, you get a degree, possibly go get a master's, you do your nine to five, all that. So, like, the idea that you can have an entire like career specific just online, where you like everything happens in your room, it was kind of like a big like a mind, like a mind blown moment for them. But uh, yeah, they've been pretty uh, open to everything. They've been really supportive, and uh, yeah, that's been pretty cool. That's wonderful. Do you have um? Do you have siblings? Yeah, I have a younger brother. He's fifteen. He's uh, he's a sophomore in high school now. Are you cool to him, or you're just like really nerdy? Does he think what he's, you're doing uh, is good? I'm cool to him because he now YouTubers that he watches because he's into like Minecraft and like gaming and stuff yeah. like that. So when he finds out that like uh, I know some of these people that like he's watching, that's where he's like, "Wow!" And then like sometimes his friend, he's told me that his friends watch my videos, but they aren't aware that like I'm his brother. So it's kind of like a like I know a secret and no one else does. It's like a it's, it's kind of normal for him now. Yeah. But, like every once in a while, I'll be like, "Hey, you know this guy follows me." He's like, "Yo, do you realize that's a big deal?" <laughs> you know. But obviously, I'm his brother, so yeah. it can't it can't ever be that. Cool. He can't let my head get too big. No, nope. as I can't with his. No, of so, course that's your job. Yeah. You keep him down. That's that's what we siblings do. Um, who do you? Well, I have to because he's going to get taller than me, so I got to make sure he knows. Like, you know that already. Here. You sure you know that already? He's already on track. I, yeah, he's. I think we're like the same height now. Oh, that bastard! I, can I call a fifteen-year-old a bastard? That's not cool. Yes, he can. That is Especially not cool. Since, like he doesn't even because like I. The only reason I cared about height was because I was really into basketball in high school. Oh uh, yeah. So like I wanted. To, so I'm like, okay, I'm like five eight, five nine. Maybe if I get a growth spurt, I can sneak into six two, six three, whatever. Didn't really happen. So it is what it is. Meanwhile, he's not he doesn't even like basketball. He's not really into sports, but he's gonna like shoot past me for no reason at all, and I'm always gonna hate him for it. Bastard, bastard. Well, you just keep him down with your pro your professional career. I don't know if he can ever touch that, but you never know. There are siblings ruling uh, the the internet and certain video channels. It, that could be a thing. Does he does, does he ever speak about that? Because I've got friends who have kids who are just, I want to be a YouTube star at eight or nine years old. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, guys, learn how to do well, uh, difficult mathematic really equations into, first. Yeah. He's really into animation. Oh. Uh, he has a drawing tablet and he's gotten really, he's gotten really good at it in the last couple of years. So I can see him pursuing that maybe on the side or if that blows up that, that he focuses on that full time. But uh, yeah, he's in the animation. He wants to figure out. Uh, he also wants to be a writer. He wants to basically his dream, his end game would be to have like a TV show, like a cartoon. Wow, you guys are super creative. That's lovely. Yeah, uh, wonder where he gets it from. Wonder where we get it from. <laughs> yeah, your parents are like, we just, kids. We just wanted you to go and get a good job and be normal human beings. I don't know. I think that's the new normal for us, right? Creative roles and exploring what your passions are and making them become a, a sustainable lifestyle. I think, I think it's wonderful that so many brilliant things like your channel have come out of a really shitty pandemic. I think um, I speak for not just myself, but so many of the the folks in the office who are just, you know, thrilled to, uh, to see your content every day. We, we thank you for it and we're glad for you and we'll be watching to see the next whale explode on your channel that thing yeah i appreciate it that's what i always like about social media like it has the such like 
you have so much access to all parts of the world and all these people that normally probably wouldn't put themselves mm-hmm. out there or if they would, they might not have the reach that they would now. It's like you can legitimately build like entire empires without ever like leaving your room. I think that's like really intriguing. Yeah, it is. Um, it, that reminds me of, and I forget the name. I'm really bad with names. Um, but I, he might be the num- the world's number one TikTok account holder. He's the guy in Italy who does the videos. Gabby. Oh, okay. do you know? You him? know what? He, we're, we're, he's Senegalese, just like me. Oh wow, that's that's I, huge. I, I love that guy. What's his name? Uh, Kabi, like, uh, Kabi? I'm not even sure how to pronounce his surname, but uh, Kabi, K H A B Y dot uh, L A M E. That's Kabi right. Dunk. He's he, amazing. Huge empire, never even has to talk. I uh, love that. Can you imagine the, you know, having just done nothing but talk for 20 years? I think what he's done, you know, what is it, 120 years ago, we had didn't have talkies on movies and he's gone back to that. The mime, just the expression or the expressionless expression has just taken over the world. And uh, we're going to play one of his videos underneath us talking right here because you don't need to hear anything. But I think some of the the videos that I love from him too are uh, – that some of his sponsored content because it's like everybody in Italy well, and loads of people around the world want to work with him. Like he is, he's, I bet he's probably the number one celebrity in Italy right now. He's like superseded TikTok. I just saw a commercial. And the thing is, he wasn't even in the commercial, but everyone was talking about him. They were like, so what does he do? And it was like, well, he, it basically he does this and everyone just knew, <laughs> oh, they're talking about copy. That's that amazing. guy. <laughs> and it was like during a commercial during an NBA game. So like that's kind of a big deal. That's huge. That, that's and, huge. That's here. You yeah. know, that's not there where he is. That is huge. That's great. Yeah, I think it started back in like March or something. And now he's sitting on over, I think he's close to 120 million. That's like insane. And that's, I don't think any wow. other apps ever had something like that. Like TikTok, like all these people were, they were normal people like a year ago and now they're just massive like uh influencers i think that's pretty cool i think it's cool too and i think i think uh definitely through the pandemic and i got fired this year as well so you know downtime and and messing with your brain and well my god what am i going to do and having such really creative and fun content it helps so listen you're doing a good thing in the world even though you know if you ever think oh i'm just doing talking about animals farting or whatever it is it's it's a service. It's a real service for people. You really bring a smile and um, don't stop what you're doing. Just get bigger. Just just blow up. Blow it up. Be the cabbie of the United States. Just like the real. I, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I love it. Thank you so much, Mama Do. Again, if you're not following him, what are you doing? Uh, M-N-D-I-A-Y-E-97. And um, thank you so much. Stay in touch. If you're ever in Austin for some sunshine, let us know. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm going to take you up on that for sure because uh, I'm going to lose my mind with this weather. I, re- it's, I just watched it get dark now because that window's uh, open. Oh, no. Sun's gone already. And uh, what is it? Is it mm. not even five yet? Oh, man. It's uh, it's like 68 degrees here today and sunny. It's like, like I said, I worried about getting a little burn on my uh, chest today walking in the sun. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Want. Yeah, I promise you there's no sunburn here. I mean, we could switch. <laughs> we could just do a trade. I'll come and stay with your parents. And you got to, okay, you can see this guy is my best friend, Blue. He's dead, but he was he's my best friend and my life partner. And if we can switch camera angles now so Mama Do can see who I live with, this is one of my four animals. So you'd have to be uh, willing to take care of him. He farts and snorts like a pig. He's a Frenchie rescue. And um, I have a brother that does the exact same thing. I, I am okay with that. That's cool. I could live with that. I'm, I'm totally, all right, house swap. Put that on the books guys we're, we're gonna do a house swap this year <laughs> thanks mama do you're the best really appreciate you being on the show today hey thank you so much for reaching out to me i had a lot of fun me Hopefully too Hopefully, i can come back again i'd love to have you good luck with everything that you do thank you so much thank you thank have you. a great day thanks and enjoy that beautiful awesome weather you know i'm gonna take a hike tomorrow and put your name on it I, I appreciate that. thank you bye-bye oh so nice uh i i think i might have felt like a little bit Maybe not starstruck's the word, but oh, that was like meeting an old friend and chatting with a new, interesting, intriguing person. I'd like to have a beer with that guy. He's funny. Um, again, if you're not following him, do. Uh, you don't have to be. This is for my mum. I like to talk to my mum sometimes in these segments. You don't have to be um, a young kid 
to enjoy videos that are entertaining and uh, informative. And then also like a PSA, a public service announcement, in case you ever think about getting too close to a pelican or a, a rotting whale carcass. The reason you don't want to be anywhere near it is because it's a ticking flesh bomb that can explode and shower you in a confetti of blood and guts. And again, it really gives you a good laugh. If you're having a shit day, just scroll through some of some of Mamadou's videos and uh, and then follow Cabby as well. Cabby, um, this is what he, 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 somebody will do these annoying AF life hack videos like, oh, what to do if uh, you get a something out of the fridge and it's too cold. They'll make some elaborate way of whatever. And Cabby will just put it in the microwave and heat it up and go mm, with the hands like gesturing. So simple, so entertaining. And uh, that's why I love social media. And the guy has 13.3 million followers. Uh, Mama Do does. Cabby, what did he say? A hundred million followers? That's really impressive. And I say, go for it. Go make some money off that shit. Um, that's impressive. Thank you for sticking around today for the podcast and hearing me gripe and complain about my own animal issues. Um, you're very nice and patient. And if this is the first time you're listening to the podcast, make sure you go and like and subscribe. Um, you can share it with some friends if you like too. That way I can continue to feed Alfie and Brady kibble and uh, get the cats, whatever it is they eat and, um, and uh, you know, keep the lights on. So thank you very much for listening. Go subscribe to those two TikTokers that I just introduced you to and have a great day. Love you. Thanks for listening. You can find more episodes and all of our other Hot Pie Media originals baked fresh daily at our home online at hotpiemedia.com, the Hot Pie Media YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts.